A typical day is hit the ground running. Um, always something different. I walk in the door. If I want some quiet time, I try to get here early and close the door to my office and work on paperwork uh, before I get bombarded with everything in the daily happenings. Um, rounds of looking at the animals, seeing kind of what's in in the shelter on a daily basis. It's all those animals that I need to sedate for their exams, try to get those done first. And then, uh, and then I start seeing the list of patients that everybody in the kennel has and the volunteers have taken notice of that I need to see whether they have a skin infection, check the eye, check the ear. So anything that the volunteers or the kennel staff see, sees out there that is wrong with our, any of our animals, those are my daily exams. So I can go from a very quiet day, doing not a whole lot and actually getting some work done here at my desk, to a very hectic day where I walk in at 8 o'clock and all of a sudden I've got three sedates, I've got a hit by car, I've got two animals that are getting transferred back from the emergency center overnight. Um, you know, so it, it just depends. Every day is different. If an animal comes in through the field from an officer or over the counter and it appears to be in not that good of general health, what they'll do is they'll run, um, they'll bring the animal right into the hospital for me to look at. And I'll either say, I have time to look at that animal right now, or it looks like something that can wait till tomorrow. And then I can either see that animal right then and assess it and take care of its needs or have it um, be placed in a kennel and then put on my exam list for tomorrow. And then we'll go out and get the horse done. Is it his left hand? It is his left hand. This gray one out here supposedly was tied up, somebody tied it up to somebody else's trailer as they were off riding. They came back from a ride and saw this stray horse tied up to their trailer. Just a general health check and find out what's going on with the horse. But she does have these melanomas all over her body. Usually gray horses get them. We ha I have put her on cimetidine, um, which is a treatment for these melanomas, and they have gone down in size. So this is Joey. He came in severely emaciated. All his ribs were showing. He touched one of our fosters and so our foster took that dog into her house and we've seen him oh a couple every couple weeks to do a weight check and stuff and he's just gained weight tremendously and he looks good now what a good dog you just need some groceries huh i have an excellent staff to begin with they are top notch um they care about the animals uh they will go the extra mile for the animals so it's my job to see that they get to do their job as best they can with not so much interference. They get to do what they love to do. So when I came on board three years ago, we started with Lynn Miller and Carla Faulkner. But yes, those two showed me the ropes. Then we got a couple more on board. I got Kelsey and Jessica, and they've just proved just top-notch, you know, go-getters, um, willing to do anything. Kendra's been here for three years, actually she's been here for four years, so a year before me, and she's great, she knows the ins and outs. So we were looking for a second veterinarian here at the shelter with a primary focus of being a spay-neuter surgeon. Of now Dr. Nicole Johnson, who comes to us with a vast amount of surgical experience. And she loves surgery, so I'm very happy. <laughs> and she's just a trooper. She gets in there and she just, you know, works and gets it done, gets all those spays and neuters done day after day. Because you earned it. No, it's just, it's just, uh... I came in new to the shelter environment. So three years ago, I was brand new to the shelter environment. So from what I did and what I learned, um, you know, we didn't do heroics. You didn't save the diabetic animals. You didn't save these animals that were going to be long-term, six weeks um, on treatments, bandage changes, and all that kind of stuff. Once the 
a bar went down and said, you're no kill, here's what you're gonna do. And I received more help, more resources for doing things. You know, the, the pressure was there just to save everything. If you can save it, save it. And, and yeah, I can, but then there's another, you know, moral ethical question in a sheltering environment. Should we be saving everything that we can and putting our resources into an animal that yes, we can save and I can pour lots and lots of money and resources into this animal, but then the rest of the animals might fall short. So there's that question, should we pour everything into this animal or spread it out along for more animals? Because we know we're gonna get more animals in. I look at it every day. What is the quality of life of this animal that's coming in here with a tumor that I highly suspect is it more aggressive than just um, a benign little fatty lump that we can take off and be done with? Um, could I take that nasty cancer off and start chemo and do all sorts of stuff? Sure, we can do that. But again, it's the quality of life for the animal. And does it need to be here in a shelter environment undergoing chemotherapy just because I can? Um, so, I mean, those are the questions I have to ask myself every day as I, as I look through these animals and then I triage them and I decide, you know, I mean, it's kind of a lot of pressure on me deciding which ones get to, you know, stay here and try. Um, and all my staff, we all, we all go through it. We all go ups and downs in our waves and we get passionate about certain animals and I have to agree with their passion too. <laughs> People's perception of the shelter, sheltering atmosphere is changing so much and it seems like sometimes the, the shelter walls on the outside that people don't see on the inside the good that's happening. Um, they just see the animals in cages and they hear the bad stories every once in a while that come out but the 99% of the good stories um, people don't pass along because people, you know, it just, it doesn't happen. We're doing a good job. We're doing not just a good job, we're doing an excellent job. You know, as far as caring for all of the animals under our care, the kennel staff on down to my veterinary staff, they're excellent. Because we are on a budget, we're a government run facility. We do have a budget we have to maintain for the taxpayers. But it's not just something, and I see this on Facebook, I see it on our website, you know, people like. They like this dog, you know, but somebody does a video and says, please adopt me, let's all like it. Well, we've got 500 likes. But let's have one person out of that 500 come on down and take that dog out. Whether you foster it or whether you adopt it. Because liking is not going to open up another kennel for another uh, homeless stray animal that's going to come in. I'm very grateful that people are donating. It's wonderful and when we put a plea out there for help, the community steps up. And, and it's absolutely fabulous. But again, um, you know, we need, we need the animals out. This isn't a place for them to live for the rest of their lives. They need a home. For more information on Ventura County Animal Services and to view additional episodes of Shelter Life, visit www.vcas.us slash shelterlife.